All right, well, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, my name is Pablo Suarez. I am field CTO for the Healthcare Vertical at WSO2. And I'm excited to welcome you all to our panel discussion on member enhancing member wellness in health and leisure. Member wellness is about promoting physical health and mental well-being through a variety of experiences and initiatives in health and leisure settings, such as, such as your traditional hospital and clinics, but also fitness centers, uh, gyms, sports facilities. Investing in member wellness initiatives or creating uh, supportive environments uh, that promote or encourage healthy behaviors will lead to a higher quality of life and a happier and healthier society that ultimately will benefit us all. Uh, today, we have a panel of experts from a diverse set of organizations who will share their insights uh, on how technology enhances member wellness experiences in health and leisure settings. But before we dive into our discussion, let's take a moment to uh, for our panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, Brito, could you please introduce yourself, briefly sharing about your role, your organization, the type of customers you serve? Uh, thank you, Pablo. Uh, my name is Brito Arul. Uh, so I work for uh, Z Omega. Uh, I'm heading the engineering team. Uh, we mainly focus on interoperability platforms. So uh, our product is Jiva uh, uh, for US healthcare. Uh, mainly focus on the population health management. So I've been with the Zomega for the last uh, six years, but I have total 25 years of experience in US healthcare. So I started my career in healthcare. When the industry was uh, transforming from paper to electronic, I started working with EMR, EHR, uh, and, and interoperability data exchange. So that's what uh, my experience on. Thank you, Nash. Yeah. I'm Nash. Um, I'm part of a senior health organization. Um, basically, I'm one of the many minions at Seniors Health striving for, uh, to accelerate therapy delivery. Um, Seniors Health is a biopharmaceutical solutions company which basically uh, helps a lot of global customers across, uh, you know, in, in the healthcare, in, in, especially in the clinical space, the clinical medical affairs and commercial sectors. Um, we are about serve about one, 100 and about 100 companies, uh, uh, countries, um, where we strive to, you know, strive through different complex uh, uh, scenarios and, uh, it, and also mainly focusing on the patient's health uh, at, across the clinical trials. Thank you. Thank you, Nash. Emily, please. Uh, hi, I'm Emily Masnow. I work at Fluidra. Fluidra is a manufacturing company which uh, creates uh, swimming pools, creates wellness related with swimming pools. We are uh, global. We are in more than 140 countries. And my role at Fluidra, it's, uh, I'm the, the global integration architect lead and platform lead also. Uh, and the main functions that, uh, that I represent at Fluidra is trying to move all the data across the globe, across all the business units and that will need that information or that data in order to, to create this perfect uh, pool experience, perfect wellness experience uh, for our, our customers on the end. Thank you, Emily. So to kick us off, I guess we can start with the question, how can technology enhance, or how does technology enhance this? the member wellness experiences in health and leisure settings. Uh, Brito, would you mind going first? Uh, sure. So to talk about uh, member uh, uh, in healthcare, uh, it's related to care management, right? So at so the end of the day, uh, as a member, uh, to talk about my wellness, how this uh, technology is helping uh, based on the data what uh, we have it uh, from your uh, um, the, the data, what do you get it from the, the benefit enrollment with your health insurance company, and also the based on uh, how you visit the physicians uh, on, on your health issues, it collects the data 
and it gives the outcome of the top risk, right? Uh, so the recent days now we are collecting the your social uh, health also. So how you eat, uh, how you travel, how, what kind of transport you use, what is your lifestyle. So with this, uh, uh, how it helps us as a member. So what is the uh, status of my health and what is the risk? And also it, it, it provides as a, uh, what is that you have to take care of your uh, uh, care, right? It's all the care management to talk about, uh, so to take care of my wellness with this data. So how your health and what are the top five risks, uh, right? Uh, how, uh, so how are we going to take care of this uh, risk? So that way, uh, this technology uh, with this kind of aggregation and getting the data from multiple sources, it helps a member to take care of his health. So that's the way I can say the technology is helping us to look at your, uh, the journey of health, how you are looking at from the childhood now, based on your social activities and how the social activities is, is kind of coming into the mental uh, and, and it, how it's impacting the physical. So with this data, the, the care managers or physicians, uh, they are going to give some uh, proposal or guidelines or wellness program. So this is the way you have to take care to avoid your health risk. So that's the way I can look at it. So well, health, technology helps. Yeah, thank you. I mean, and, and you touch on a very important factor here that I, I don't know if our audience, I mean, uh, maybe all familiar, but like, you know, a lot of times when we talk about healthcare, we're thinking of like, uh, going to the hospital, going to the clinic, and that's where we get the care, right? After, you know, some e e e episode of care happens, right? But like you're, you're mentioning SDOH or social determinants of health to be more proactive, right? And, and look at not just at the clinical aspects, but also at like, like the, where we live, if we have access to food, if we have access to, to a clean environment. Uh, and then that's also part of, of the member wellness or the patient wellness. So, so thank you, Brito, for bringing that up as well. Uh, Nash, from the CRO perspective, you know, we'll call it a patient at that point, right? Yes, yes. so um, at, at Senior Health, we are more focused on patients, improving patients' life. So we leverage a lot of different uh, strategies and insights and advanced technologies to help with all that. Um, so we, we, you know, we use health apps, you know, wearable devices, um, data ag aggregating from all that, dif uh, different various heterogeneous sources um, and using different inside platforms like data lakes and things like that to help aggregate data and provide insights. And again, being more proactive in terms of figuring out uh, how can we avoid uh, adverse effects to a patient based on previous studies that we have done with other patients in other studies? Um, maybe we can see from patterns and things like that. So that's how we're using it right now. Exactly, because I mean, the ultimate goal here, I mean, can reduce healthcare costs, right? If you're able to detect that a lot sooner, and when we're talking about with CRO companies, right? I mean, the clinical trial, Imagine a patient that has just been diagnosed with a rare disease or a cancer diagnosis, right? Something very critical. Time is of essence, very critical, right? So matching, let's say, that patient to a clinical trial, you know, can make a big difference. I mean, one week and like so, uh, being more proactive, it, it can save lives. Uh, Emily, from your leisure setting perspective, there is also a wellness factor. Uh, yes, uh, we, we center on wellness. Uh, we have a lot of... Uh, applications, we have uh, devices of taking care of the swimming pool and, and having the perfect swimming pool at the mo and every mo moment. Uh, with the applications, we can hand handle, we can govern all the devices that we have there. We can take measures about uh, the chemicals, pH, uh, the pH from the water, in order that, that uh, we will have the perfect pool ready for a customer to, to have this leisure, to this wellness when he's going into the, the, the swimming pool. And after that, all this data should be processed, so we must recollect all this data in order to have behaviors about the swimming pool, how they use swimming pool, which is the best things that we can, we can work in order to improve this wellness inside the, the swimming pool. So we must uh, also uh, analyze and store all these data to into data lakes, into our analytics in order to have this, these insights about the, the use that the swimming pool is done by, by the customers on the end. 
Thank you. So, and, and maybe we can dive into that that part of like how can technology enable like this interoperability integration with other IT system within the organization, right? I mean, like uh, in the case of swimming pool business or line of business, the IoT related platforms, right? Uh, integrating that and like providing maybe a mobile app for the uh, individual to like you know prepare that water temperature or or you know before time, and then that will deliver a better experience, right? And, and, and create that environment uh, to promote wellness. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit, uh, expand on the uh, technology that you used, the, the APIs, lack of standards thereof maybe, or? Um, mainly all the IoT devices, uh, or all the devices are IoT on the end. So they are all connected through uh, a hub or a communication hub into the cloud. And from there, we are working with uh, mainly two different technologies, uh, APIs, and even streamings. So we can have uh, any time all the data collected about what's happening on that on that swimming pool. And once on, once this, uh, the user with the application that then also uses the APIs in order to to have all the data from the swimming pool at that moment, then can act. Uh, with the swimming pool about uh, whatever the pump or the chemicals that are on the on the on, on the swimming pool, so we are working on that on on APIs on one side and the event streaming on the other in order to collect all the data. Thank you, thank you. And Nash, I mean similar question. I mean like you know you have various systems, data silos fragmented everywhere, complexities around the the data volumes and the uh, the the types of structures or lack of the structures, right, you know, uh, on, on how do you address those challenges? What kind of uh, uh, best practices do you recommend for our audience as well? So we usually we approach with different um, strategies like, like data governance and, and um, you know, data standardizations, you know, uh, when it comes to data standardization, we try to follow some of the best practices in the industry when it comes to clinical data. So when we ingest data from different sources, we basically try to standardize the data to a format that could be in interoperable with other systems across. So you know, that's one. And then uh, from a data governance perspective, we try to create robust policies around you know, security, privacy, and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to integrations, we try to use different strategies and standards uh, like ETL pipelines and especially when it comes to large volumes of data, we're trying to use um, you know, technologies like uh, data lakes and things like that to store large volume of data and also apply different uh, data standards, I mean data, data standardization or formats and save that across for other insights and things like that. Yeah, so we brought up, I mean, you brought the uh, the, the the impact that standards can have in interoperability space, in integration. Uh, Brito, I, in your previous session, you mentioned a lot about the standards. Maybe you can expand for the audience that we have now a little bit of like how the benefits that have and like the challenges or opportunities uh, when integrating and, and dealing with different standards. But Yeah, so when it comes to this interoperability, right, when you get the data from multiple sources, that's what I was trying to explain. There is a standard uh, which we have, a health level seven, HL1 standard. And also in US, uh, the EDA world, we have X12 for the, the financial data. But the challenge is uh, uh, many of the, the legacy systems, so they have, uh, even though they are ready to adopt the standards, but the problem is uh, because of the legacy, huge volume of data, so they could not uh, uh, adopt the standards. So, so the, the alternative way, it, uh, so we define uh, what data format you want. It could be like a property format. And, and nowadays, this, uh, we, we are trying to propose kind of a middleware mapping, you know. You give a data as it is, and, and we try to map to make sure that, uh, so where everyone is follow the, the standard guidelines uh, given by the, the, the regulation, you know. And especially in US, uh, uh, so they are enforcing all the, software vendors to, vendors to make sure that everyone adopt the interoperability standards. So that way, even though the, the clients and customers, they have a data in their own standard, so we as a software vendor, we try to make it and make sure that we follow the standards so that the data is clean or 
the integrity of the data and quality of the data is taken care so that uh, the outcome of the data is very clean and what do you need what do you get so that's a way just to add to that when we do the similar things right you know data quality is very key for us so we have different strategies around data quality itself like you know we use mdm solutions and then at the same time mapping and transformation is key because you know it, with variety of formats it's it's very challenging yeah, so. yes i mean the uh, i mean one traditional use case interpretability use case that we we hear a lot in the in the healthcare space i mean the the prior authorization use case uh, that deals with uh, uh, the patient or member going to the hospital uh, for, for an episode of care, I mean, like it could be a hip or knee surgery, and then the hospital has to talk to the insurance company to get approval or an authorization before that uh, uh, doctor or hospital can render uh, that service. And there is a lot of back and forth of information, and uh, we are hearing like uh, there's a CMS interoperability rule to promote uh, the use of APIs and a data standard like FHIR. Uh, uh, I know uh, Z Omega, you guys are uh, already uh, getting, uh, doing some work around that. Can you maybe share a little bit of, of like the, uh, the benefits that we'll have to access the provider's EMR uh, data? Yeah, sure. So the CMS, uh, uh, the last January 2024, so they have uh, released the CMS 0057 final rule. So it talks about four things. Uh, so one is... Uh, in healthcare industry, all the data exchange between healthcare systems, so they have to adopt the, the standard of real-time uh, uh, REST API, JSON. So that's what uh, we have a fire. And in the guideline, they talk about four things. Uh, one is the patient access API. As a member or a patient, you have a right to ask uh, the payer and the, and the provider to give the data uh, about your uh, demographics or your coverage and your clinical data. It could be in the web application or it could be in the mobile app. So that's where you can see the data, uh, how uh, you have utilized the data. That's a, that's a list of uh, fire APIs, RESTful APIs uh, available, right? And which the CMS rule enforce all the healthcare system and software vendors to make sure that they share the information. The second one is the provider access API. So the, the patient data, the APIs are available. Now, uh, based on the patient consent, uh, the provider can access their uh, holistic data. So as a patient, as a, as a member, I might have visited multiple uh, clinic hospitals or I'm, I'm a long-term illness patient, so I might have visited multiple uh, systems, right? So the provider can use this real-time JSON API and that's what the guideline says. All these fire resources, they, they are provider systems. They have to use uh, provider uh, APIs to exchange the data. The third thing they talk about, the, the payer-to-payer exchange. For example, this year, I have a coverage with the, the health insurance company A. For some reason, I'm, I'm changing my coverage to uh, another health plan next year. So now the, the problem is the, 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 the payer A, the, the coverage, what do we have last year? So they have to give my basic demographics coverage information to the, the payer B. Earlier, we have to uh, duplicate the data. So the payer-to-payer -payer exchange also, they, they made it as a interoperability standards. So all those payers, they have to adopt this fire standard. So make sure that they transform this information using a REST API. So that is called payer-to-payer -payer exchange. The fourth one, they're talking about the prayer authorization API. So that is a more critical part of this CMS rule. So it's morely impacting the, the payer world and also the, the provider. So it's advantage for the patient. So normally when you, as a patient, you have a coverage for this year and you go for a visit and, and the, the prayer authorization, right, it is always a critical. Sometimes, you know, you go and visit the clinic and hospitals. At the time of uh, uh, visit, they say, no, it won't cover. It, it covers medically necessary. It won't cover this prescription, all those things. The guideline says, uh, so the, from the EMR EHR systems, the, when, the, when the visit starts, uh, the, the payer has to approve based on your coverage, the 48 hours to 72 hours. So if they need any documentation or they need more details from the payer side or provider side or the patient side, so the prayer authorization API, which will 
uh, help these uh, uh, software vendors to use. That's why the standards are used across. So that's what this uh, prayer authorization APA helps uh, and reduce the burden of the provider. You know, the, the, the approval from the payers is always a challenge in healthcare. So this, these rules enforce provider and payer to collaborate to make sure that uh, the data uh, is exchanged uh, using the REST API. So that's what this uh, prior authorization rule or CMS rule talks about in the, the interoperability standard. Yeah, thank you. I mean, and, and I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, Monday finally getting through. There's been a few attempts, right? Uh, um, uh, thank you. Na Nash, uh, what emerging technologies or trends do you foresee shaping the future of CROs, industry, I mean, AI, we talked about that earlier. Or yeah, definitely AI. Um, like every other uh, companies out there, they're you know, delving into AI, the Gen AI, to be precise right now. So we are developing a lot of um, applications around Gen AI that, are, that basically focused on patients, uh, improving patients' life. At the same time, uh, helping our customers um, be able to find patients across uh, different, uh, different uh, regions and also helping recruiting our pa patients for those uh, clinical sites that we, whether, that we enable in different countries. So yeah, I mean, AI is definitely the disruptor at this point. Yeah, uh, thank you. Emily, I mean, from the uh, technology trends that can improve, perhaps pull safety and deliver a better experience. Uh, yes, for sure. Uh, AI should have an important factor in on, on the swimming pool management, uh, one of the things that we can <coughs> that we can start working on is uh, we have a lot of data, so we can analyze that data using machine learning in order to do preventive alerts uh, about uh, some failure that could have the the swimming pool, uh, like the pump that it's uh, going to stop working or that the pH is uh, wrong. Even we can analyze the data using also the weather because the weather is a, an important thing in when you are thinking about the, the water that is on, on the swimming pool. So all, all this analysis using uh, AI will, will come in a, in, a, in a near future. And once we have all this, then we can also move to a next step for the customer, which is Okay, I know that your pump is going to fail in one week, so um, let's put a request to the to the pool maintainer in order that he comes and solves the issue before it happens. So we are also providing a new service uh, in order that the customer could enjoy his swimming pool uh, on a normal basis without having any surprise when, say, he goes into the, the swimming pool. So um, I, I will, will take an important role about that. Thank you. And I want to leave some minutes for questions. So we'll wrap it up with this final question, I guess. Uh, uh, what are the main takeaways, I guess, that you can offer to our audience or action insights that uh, you want our audience to leave? with, uh, uh, maybe we can start with Yunash? Or... Yeah, I mean, as Sanjeev has said this morning, right, every company is a software company. Um, I think we all, as technologists, I think we need to look at the more modern uh, advanced techn uh, technology options that we have and be able to implement that to better, you know, patients, health, or any wellness industry. Well, yeah, agility, right? I mean, especially in the zero business, right? Having that Definitely, agility is key. Yeah. It'd be able to, you know, transform into this new waters that we're going to get into. Yeah, thank you. And I think that um, we are speaking about technology, but uh, really we are speaking about uh, data, managing data, uh, storing data, uh, analyzing this data, and then we use technology to do all these kind of things to share data, to provide data to whoever needs that. So. The important thing here is uh, data. We are speaking about data, and we are masking that in technology, actually, which is the one that allows us to work with all the data and provide the, the services, the wellness, and whatever our customers are needing. Thank you. Thank you.
Preetu. I would say, uh, make it very simple. Uh, don't try to complicate with this data. So end of the day, when the, the members, when they look at the data, what they want to see. So using the technology, latest things, we just need to simplify instead of making it so complexity. That's what I would say. Take away from this uh, discussion. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate you guys uh, participating on this panel. And I will open it up the floor for questions.